So we're gonna do a very raw repair. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of repairing this board. This is a broken MX Ergo motherboard. It was sent in from someone who tried replacing switches and stuff went wrong. Look at that packaging though. Stat bag, nicely labeled. I don't see that often. I appreciate that. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a peek. So these are the replacement switches. They are silent, which I don't like. And on the back we have some balled up solder joints. So these balls of solder indicate that there are no pads left for the solder to flow to. So there's probably broken pads and traces and that's why it's not working. So I'm going to take some of the solder wick and just remove as much solder as I can and hopefully the switch as well and see what we're working with. In some of my videos I get asked about solder wick. People are surprised to see it work so well because they don't have the same luck as I do when it comes to it. But really all you need is a good iron. That's, the, that's key. A good iron with good thermal transfer. Second, a good wick. I use Chem, Chemtronics Chemwick. Really good stuff. Don't cheap out on it and it will work for you. So I'm going to take a clean tip here. This is a probably the wrong style tip to be using with this because there's not a lot of thermal transfer. But we're just going to butt the wick up against that solder joint and just let everything heat up. And soon enough, all that solder should be transferred into the wick, which it is. Now if we use a bigger tip, the heat transfer will be faster. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use this chisel tip and now with this chisel tip it should heat up and transfer way faster so let's go ahead and test that out and it just flows right into it nice i'm going to do it with this one and flows right into it and uh, my suspicions were correct there is no pad underneath which is why it's not working so we're going to do it to this one as well so typically when this happens uh, someone is trying to remove it with either too much aggression uh, if they're using desoldering work they're probably like moving the iron around a lot uh, if they're using a desoldering gun they're probably moving that around a lot and they're just using too much uh, pressure down on it and that'll weaken the adhesive of the pad and just remove it from the board and leave you with a broken product this is a no shame zone because i have done worse in my early days so now these switches should just pop right out because there's nothing holding them on. Uh, we got some, we have a small joint holding this one on still uh, just a little bit. So I'm going to heat up this pad right here. This is the, looks like the ground pad. So there's probably some copper left that's causing a small sweat joint. So I'm just going to heat that up and it should, should pull right off. Then we can get a look at what we're working with okay so we got two small sweat joints here a sweat joint is just a small amount of solder that's hanging on to uh, part of copper typically the feed through of the hole and it's just enough to prevent the pin from coming loose and if you yank on it too much you will cause damage nine times out of ten so what I'm gonna do here is just add a bit more solder to that pin and just drop it out that way and then uh, give it a bit more solder and there we go and we can clearly see why we're not getting any registering with clicking uh, we have a signal that's coming through this hole to this via which is ripped up so there's no continuity to that this ground pad is probably still good but it's very damaged and um, if we come over here to this switch it looks like everything is being taken care of on the bottom so we're going to go ahead and switch over to the bottom view and we have the same thing we have a small trace coming out of this third hole or this middle hole that is ripped up you can see it just flopping right there so so now it's time to repair this thing. I'm going to start with the right switch. Now there are three holes here, but only two holes are used. It is a switch that is closing the open contact and the um, common contact. So we're not going to worry about the third position, which would be normally closed. We don't really care about that. In order to fix this, I'm just going to go ahead and expose some copper here with my scalpel.
and now I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. So now we're going to take a little bit of flux, put it on top of that exposed copper right there, and just kind of flood that trace until we get a good wetting on it, which we have now. So now we're going to come in with a very fine piece of wire, and we're going to feed it through the middle hole. So that way we can carry the signal through the board and then solder it to the lug on the other side when we put the switch back in. I'm going to come in and just tin that wire. Just put a little solder on it so that way it bridges easier to the trace. Heat it up for a second. Pull it away. Now we're just going to do a little wiggle test to make sure that the wire is not going anywhere. It's not. I'm going to come in with my scalpel and just snip away that excess. Just like that. I'm also going to clean it. I'm also going to go ahead and jump this ground connection. I don't think I need to, but uh, it won't hurt anything to do it if it's already connected. Odds are it's already connected on the other side, but I think it's just good practice to jump it and connect it anyways. Might be overkill. It probably is. I could ring it out with a multimeter, but I don't want to. We're going to do the same thing. Just feed a small wire through. Now this is very thin wire, so it'll not interfere with the switch being in place. I'm often asked what kind of wire I use for these types of repairs, and this is just individual strands from a 30 or a 32 gauge um, stranded cable. I find that it's the perfect match for a lot of traces, and it helps to um, stitch together vias and stuff such as this. So I'm going to go ahead and just flow that. This is a ground plane, so I want to heat it up a little bit longer just to make sure we have a good wetting. I'm going to go in and snip that excess, just like that. And clean it up. Alright, so with those holes cleaned, I can now drop in the switch. I'm using the new switches because I don't want to take the risk of the other ones being damaged just enough to fail in like a year or so. I'm just going to use the new ones just in case. So as you can see our jumper wires are right there so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of wrap it around the lugs and then I'm just going to tack some solder on it. And same with this one right here. I'm going to come in and just solder it. Since we're missing all three pads, we no longer have the structural integrity of the solder pads to hold the switch into place, so I'm going to go ahead and just use a little bit of electronics glue on the switch where it meets the PCB. I'm just going to come in with some UV and cure that glue. That should be pretty good. So now we're going to move on to the left switch. Since there's no trace damage up top, I'm going to go ahead and just slap the new switch in. Flip it over. Now we do have a little bit of that ground pad hanging on, so that'll act as a nice anchor for um, the switch itself. I'm going to awkwardly hold the switch with my fingers and just do a little bit of solder there to bridge the pin to the exposed plane. I might run a wire just in case. We'll see how it goes. So now that that's tacked in place, you can see the switch isn't flush, so now that I don't have to feed solder, I'm just going to go ahead and heat that up and push it flush. And just like that, we have a flush switch. Flush switch. Oh, words are hard at 2 in the morning, dog. 
kind of lucked out with this pin. We have a test point right here. So I'm just going to jump a wire from that test point to the center switch pin. I'm going to bring in more of that fine wire and just wrap it around that center pin. Just give it a good wrap around. A little wrap around. I'm just going to solder that wire to that center switch pin. We're good. No flux. No flux given. Now I'm going to take that wire and just kind of route it the best I can to where it lines up with that test point. Now I should have wrapped it the other way so that way it's naturally bent, but I wasn't thinking because my brain is fried. I am so tired. I'm just going to... Oh, there's a little bit of trace left there, so I'm going to get that out. Okay, right there. Add a little flux to that, because I don't like how that looks. Melt that flux, and now I'm just going to solder that wire to that test point. And now I'm going to push the wire flush, and then reflow that joint so that way it looks nicer. I think I'm going to come in with our scalpel and just snip off that tail there. So I don't like how we're missing almost like 90% of this pad. So just for funsies, I'm going to solder a jumper wire from that ground pad to this pin over here, which is also ground. I'm going to tack it in place real fast, just so it doesn't move on me. And I'm going to wrap it around this pin and then wrap it around this pin and then just solder that and that looks way better and it looks so much better so I'm just going to go ahead and snip those tails I'm just going to lightly clean it, not too much. We're missing a good chunk of the support for this switch as well. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of electronics glue right there. We have the ground pad up front holding it down, so I think just a little in the back wouldn't hurt. For the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and just put some more glue right over all those pads and exposed wires. Not so much for support, but for um, just like, I don't know, I guess preventative maintenance. You don't want any chance of corrosion and with these holes being so blown open, it's a good possibility in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and protect it now. And just like that, we have a fully repaired MX Ergo board. Uh, they didn't send the rest of the mouse, so I'm going to go ahead and take apart my mouse, plug all this crap in, and make sure it works before sending it back. I just want to test this out before sending it back to Canada. Um, and here it, here it is installed inside of my MX Ergo case. We have my motherboard right here. Um, as you can see, this was the one in one of my previous videos. And this is the repaired motherboard with the silent switches. Um, just have it kind of haphazardly installed. I'm gonna go ahead and push this right switch. See if I can get this all on camera. We got that going. I'm gonna switch over to the left switch. And we have that working as well. So this mouse is repaired. Thank you.